In Jesus' name we pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. A miracle day. Supernatural day. A day of exploits. A day of healing. A day of deliverance. A day of teaching. A day of climbing up to the next level. Lord, I pray for all your people here, from our ministers, to our workers, to our leaders, to everybody. Oh Lord, I pray, every stronghold in every life will come down today in Jesus' name. The power that breaks the yoke. The anointing that destroys every evil thing. Lord, send it down right now in Jesus' name. Lift up your people. Encourage your people. Move your people forward. And let every stronghold come down in every light today. In Jesus' name. Lord, begin the work. By the time we end today, Lord, I pray. There will be nobody here still having any burden, any yoke, any adversity, any affliction, any stronghold. In Jesus' name. We have accepted what you have done. We receive the miracle already. Thank you for everything. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you very much. We're looking at Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. I'm reading two verses of scripture. In verse 30 and verse 31. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 30 By faith the walls of Jericho fell down After they were compassed about seven days Verse 31 By faith the harlot Rahab perished not You will not perish Perish not with them that believed not When she had received the spies with peace. As you look at Hebrews chapter 11, it's a chapter that is talking on faith, but not just theoretical faith. It's giving us a practical handle on what faith is, a practical handle on what faith does, a practical handle on what faith accomplishes. As you look at verse 1, it says, Now faith is. It's saying that faith is not an historical thing. Faith is not something of the past. Faith is something ever present, ever necessary, ever indispensable. Because now, at this time, faith is. It doesn't say faith was. Of course it was. And neither does it say faith shall be. Of course it shall be. But it is today. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. As you look at all these people, you'll find that when they started manifesting faith, they didn't see. But before faith came to an end, they saw. You will see. They dreamt it. They thought it. They got it eventually. But I want to tell you, that sometimes when God gives you a promise of a provision, then there is a problem that confronts you. But eventually, as you keep on believing, which is what we came to do here tonight, I came here today believing. You came here today believing. And as we believe, you'll see the fulfillment of what you believe in Jesus' name. They kept on believing until it was done. I told you that today we're talking on pulling down strongholds by faith. I'm looking at this on three perspectives. Number one, conquering by faith. I will conquer. I said I will conquer. Conquering by faith. Let, let me stop there for a moment. Let's come back to this. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 30. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down. After they were compassed about seven days. I need to read the story to you. The story you find in Joshua chapter 6. Joshua chapter 6. 
I'm reading to you there from verse 1. Joshua 6 verse 1. Now Jericho was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given into thy hand Jericho and the king thereof and the mighty men of valor. The Lord said, See, you see something. I have given into your hand Jericho. And you know, the walls were still there, and God said, I have given. The Lord saw it done already. And so the Lord said, Joshua, see, I've given it to your hands, the king of Jericho, and the whole land. Look at verse 3 now. And ye shall come past the city, all ye men of war, and go round about the city once. Thus shall thou do six days. Now you need to listen to the instruction. You know some people, all they know is the promise of God. See the promise of the Lord here. Joshua, don't worry about it. There's nothing to fear. I'm giving Jericho to your hand. They say, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. And then they run away and say, come back. We're not through yet. The commandment is now. All you men of war will pass through. Uh -uh, but God said he has given us. If he has given it to us, why go around? That's what some people think. God gave me the promise. He said he will do it. Why pray? Prayer and promise must come together. Some people say, God has given me the promise. Why obey the commandment of the Lord? The commandment and the promise, they must come together. Some people don't understand that there's what we call divine human partnership. Divine human partnership. God said, I have given each, each one, and yet all the men of war, you will go around that city once every day for six days. On the seventh day, you'll do it seven times. Let's go now, verse 4. And the seven priests shall bear before the ark seven trumpets of ram's horns and the seventh day ye shall come past the city seven times and the priest shall blow with the trumpet and it shall come to pass it shall come to pass i said it shall come to pass that when they make a long blast with the ram's horn and when ye hear the sound of the trumpet all the people shall shout with a great shout, and the wall of the city shall fall down flat. And the people shall ascend up every man straight before him. Jump down to verse 10. And Joshua had commanded the people, saying, Verse 10 Ye shall not shout, nor make any noise. What's your voice? Neither shall any word proceed out of your mouth until the day that I bid you shout, then shall ye shout. That verse 10 is very significant. You see, there are people, they want miracle, but they do not turn the way into the miracle. They want exploits to be done in the strength and the power of the Lord. They do not know exploits come. Look at this one now. The Lord told the children of Israel. He said, as for the land of promise, it is yours. It is yours in Jesus' name. As for Jericho, it is yours. It is yours in Jesus' name. As for the walls around Jericho, as for the stronghold, they are coming down. They are coming down in Jesus' name. But before then, each day, for six days, You'll walk around like this, just once. But keep your mouth shut. Keep your mouth shut. Keep silent and succeed. Very important. Be silent and succeed. The problem of the children of Israel in the wilderness was talking and talking and talking. They lost a lot already by talking. Can I remind you? At the Red Sea, talking, talking, talking. Why have you brought us here? We're going to die here. Shut up. 
be still and know that he is the Lord and see the salvation of the Lord. They never learned their lesson. And then Moses went to the presence of the Lord. As for this Moses, we do not know what has happened to him. Make us rise up, make us go talking, talking, talking. And God said, see what they have done. I'm going to reject them because their tongues got them into trouble. And then Miriam and Aaron. After all, this Moses, we know about his marriage unto that Midianitish woman. And then again, leprosy came on Miriam, talking, talking, talking. And eventually, Korah, Dathan, and Abiram. The Lord said, this is the one to lead. And then they began again. What's the difference between Moses and Aaron and us? Are they the only people that have the power of God? And the earth opened up and swallowed them up. Their problem in the wilderness was talking, talking, and talking. And so the Lord now said, tell them, we're going to solve this problem of talking and talking if we're going to have these Jericho walls come down. Maybe that's your problem. We talk too much. And the Lord is saying, there is time to be quiet. He says, be quiet and conquer. Write that down. Be quiet and conquer. You remember the time the journey was too much for them. They became discouraged. And they said, we are discouraged even about this food we are eating. And serpents came and started biting them. Many of them died because of talking, talking, and talking. That's what the Lord now said. Let us cure ourselves of this malady. Let us cure ourselves of this talking, talking, and talking. Everyone will keep quiet every day, just walk around, no noise, no voice, no word. Then they went back to the camp. The second day, they did the same thing. No noise, no shouting, no word, nothing. Then they went to the camp, and then on the seventh day, on the seventh day, on the seventh day, something happened. I said something happened. And before I tell you what happened, you know, it's not worthy. It's very important to find that all the men, all the women, all the boys, all the girls, all the old, all the young, every one of them, without any exception, that at this particular time, they could obey the words of the Lord through Joshua. Everybody just kept quiet. It's like daddy told mommy. Mommy and daddy told the children, this has been a problem for 40 years. And because of all those words were spoken, and see where we are today. And the Lord is saying, if we're going to have this victory ahead of us, there must be something we're going to do. We keep quiet completely and totally so that, so that these Jericho walls we see today, praise the Lord, they will come down in Jesus' name. They said there will be no words of slander anymore. There will be no words of gossip anymore. There will be no words of false accusation. Everybody will just keep quiet. You know, if you can do that in your life, you will do it in Jesus' name. No slander, no gossip, no, mama, no words, no voice, nothing. You just say, all I'm interested in today this week, this month, for the rest of the year, these Jericho walls that God has assured me will come down, must come down. And that's more important to me than gossiping or murmuring or backbiting. I say all that, no more. And the words of tail bearing, story from here to there, from there to there, all the story of tail bearing, everything gone. Words of anger. Words of pride, words of self-management, totally cleaned off. We use the word, we say delete. That is, take it off. Don't let us hear any sound of anything that is related to words of insincerity, or words of dishonesty, or words of disrespect, or words of disregard. Everything totally gone and words of sinful independence. You know, there are some people like that, like Korah, Death, and Byram, sinful independence. We are by ourselves. We'll say whatever we want to say. That was their problem in the wilderness. But now that problem was solved. As the Lord said, 
kept quiet and conquer, the silent and succeed. And so they all kept quiet and he praised what he thing for the millions of people, a multitude, to obey that at that time. And in their own case, all the words of discouragement and the words of despair, all those words came to an end. I come to point number two, confession of faith. The confession of faith. Confession of faith. We're looking at Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11, we're reading here now from verse 31. By faith, the harlot Rahab perished not with them that believed not when she had received the spies with peace. Again, it says that what Rahab received the miracle of deliverance, the miracle of protection, the miracle of preservation that this woman received was by faith. It said, it was by faith she perished not. Faith is so important because faith is a preservative. Faith is a protector. And faith grants us protection and preservation. And so if we understand how she manifested faith, we too, we can manifest the same kind of faith. And ours will be the preservation of the Lord Ours will be the protection of the Lord. Let me show you the story in Joshua again. Joshua chapter 2. In Joshua chapter 2, look at verse 8. And before they were laid down, she came up unto them upon the roof. And she said unto the men, I know that the Lord had given you the land and that your terror is falling upon us and that all the inhabitants of the land faint because of you. She said, I know, I know knowledge is very important. The knowledge of the word of God. You see, there are some people, they just come to church. And when we're reading the Bible and reading all those verses, they say, too many verses. Do we have to read all that? Yes, I know you will know something. Because it is out of what you know. That's how you have the victory. But if you know nothing, if you don't have the knowledge of the word of God, how are you going to have your victory? Look at Proverbs chapter 19, verse 2. Also, that the soul... Be without knowledge, it is not good. Look at all those people in Jericho. They didn't know what they ought to know about God, about Joshua, about Israel, about the possibilities and potentials and the power of faith. And because their soul lacked knowledge, that's how they missed the miracle. Hosea chapter 4 verse 6. Hosea chapter 4 verse 6. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. That's why Rahab is a good example for us. As I look at Rahab, I want to learn lessons on how to have faith. How to have faith. Because it's by faith they succeeded. And it's by faith we are going to succeed. How, how do I understand? How do you understand the faith of Rahab? Number one, the faith of Rahab, it came with confession. The confession of agreement with God. Confession of agreement with God. And look at verse 10. For we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you. When ye came out of Egypt, and what ye did unto the two kings of the Amorites, that were on the other side, Jordan, Sihon, and Og, whom ye utterly destroyed. And as soon as we had heard these things, our hearts did melt. Neither did there remain in any more courage in any man because of you. For the Lord your God, he is God in heaven above 
and in the earth beneath. Confession of agreement with God. And when God gives you a promise and say, Lord, I agree. I believe. That's what is going to happen. Satan says whatever. I don't agree. Your enemy says whatever. You don't agree. Men say whatever. You don't agree. But God has spoken. And because God has spoken, I'm in total agreement with the Almighty God. That is faith. And that's how a Rahab had faith in God. Number two, cooperation with the ambassadors of God. Cooperation with the ambassadors of God. Rahab said, I know you are the people of God. I know God sent you here. And I know that the Lord has given you the land. And I'm going to cooperate with you. I'll protect you. And the people in Jericho will not see you. But show me a sign that you will not destroy me when you come. And that my people will not be destroyed. They said, this colored thread, this rope, red in color, that you have used in letting us now hang it there until we come. That cooperation with the ambassadors of God was the expression of her faith. And an expression brought the realization of the miracle. And if you will have that same faith, cooperation with the ambassadors of God, your miracle is not far away. Amen. Number three is conviction without the anxiety of the godless. Conviction without the anxiety of the godless. You see, all the other people, they fainted. All the other people, they were worried. All the others were anxious. The Israelites are coming. They're going to destroy the land. Where are we going to be? What are we going to do? They were anxious. But in the case of Rahab, she was confident. She was resting. Because she rested her hope and she rested her faith on the words of the Lord. That once I've accepted the word of the Lord and I've accepted, I'm in agreement with the Almighty God Himself. There was no anxiety anymore. After we pray tonight, no anxiety in your heart anymore. Whatever you dreamt about in the past, once tonight has come, and then I pray that miracle prayer upon you, everything is over. And then you go out of this place making a confession of agreement with God. You go out of this place having cooperation of the ambassador of God. And then you go out of this place with conviction, without the anxiety of the godless. I look at Rahab here. I see another thing, number four now. Consistency of assurance in God. Consistency of assurance in God. After they are told how what to do, just put this colored thread there. She was consistent. She put it there. And then he said, all your father, your mother, your brothers, your sisters, everyone, they'll come into the house here to you. And then they stayed there. None came in, none went out. They just stayed there. They were consistent. See that constancy. See that consistency. It brings miracle in our lives. But you know, some people, they are on the right today. Then tomorrow, they are on the left. Today, this is what they believe. Tomorrow, that is what they believe. This week, this is where they are. They are all with us. They are shouting, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Great. Amen. And then tomorrow, they are the backyard of one harbor somewhere. They are not consistent. But when you put your faith in Christ, and you know this is the way. What keep there in? In the morning, in the afternoon, in the night, you are there. Rainy time, sunshine, you are there. The people threaten, the people don't threaten, you are there. The news is going on this way, another news is counteracting it, you are there. You are a consistent man, say, I believe in my God. I believe in my God. It shall be, even as it was told me, you are a candidate for miracle. Consistency of assurance in God. Number five, constancy of abiding within the gathering. Constancy of abiding within the gathering. They gathered everyone together. Brothers coming. Sisters coming. Mommy coming. Daddy coming. They told me that once we abide, once we stay, 
and we're gathered together inside this place. They said, that's all we have to do. We don't have to think. We don't have to fast. We don't have to do anything. Just abide. Just abide. Abide in the gathering. And you see, that, that's what the Lord is expecting, that until he comes, this is where he has called you. And this is where he's placed you. Maybe something is happening over there. Another thing is happening over there. A celebration is going on over there. Festival is going on over there. Sacrifice is going on over there. Another scene, dancing going on over there. A whatever going on over there. And they say, why don't you come? I'm abiding in the gathering. Within the gate. Within the gate. Here is where the Lord has put me. Here is where the Lord has sent me. And Rahab will wake up. Mommy, don't go out. Daddy, don't go out. Those people are coming. These Jericho walls, they're going to fall down. And we must abide here. And they remain there. It's as you remain. Your miracle will meet you there. You know, it's, uh, the miracle doesn't come by, you know, I'm here today, I'm there tomorrow, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. But you abide in the gathering. And because of that consistency and constancy of abiding in the gathering, that's how they got the miracle eventually. Number six, confinement from the adversaries of God. Confinement. You know what Rahab did? They confined themselves. The drunkards were outside, confine yourselves here. The smokers were outside, confine yourself here. The adulterers were outside, confine yourself here. The fornicators are outside there, confine yourself here. All the robbers and all the evil people, they are over there, confine yourself here. Abide here and confine yourself. And all those evil doers and wicked people, they are out there, confine yourself here. All those people that have sinned, let them come. Those Israelites, we will we'll fight them. We're going to fight the purpose of God. We're going to fight the plan of God. We're going to find the forward move of those people. Let them come. All those fighters that were planning and plotting to fight against God, they were outside. They confined themselves within the gathering of the people of God. And when you understand that... They are all around in your neighborhood. People who will not listen to the word of God. People who will not accept the word of God. And you say, I'm just looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of my faith. They say, how about this? I'm looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of my faith. How about this other? I'm looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of my faith. How about idol? I'm looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of my faith. How about, you know, be, be wise and help yourself. Heaven helps us to help themselves. Don't worry about that. I'm looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of my faith. You are confined to faith. You are confined just to this from the adversaries of God. You keep away from them. Be ye separate, says the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing. And I will be a father unto you, and you shall be my sons and my daughters, says the Lord. I'm telling you, it will not be long. It will not be long. All these Jericho walls will come down your life in Jesus' name. Don't worry about the sickness. You are healed already. About the oppression, you are delivered already. About all the attack, there is an anointing that breaks the yoke and is in the house tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Number seven, confidence in the almightiness of God. Confidence in the almightiness of God. That prayer was just confident. She rested assured. She removed her faith from the king of Jericho. She removed her faith from all the men that had been coming to give her some tips and some money to commit sin with her. She removed her confidence and faith away from all those people and she had confidence in the almightiness of God. God is almighty. I said God is almighty and with him all things are possible. That almightiness of God will be revealed in your life tonight in Jesus' name. I come to point number three, the characteristics of faith. The characteristics of faith. As we put everything together, I'm coming back to uh, Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11, and I'm reading here from verse 30 and verse 31. It says in verse 30, by faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after they were compassed about seven days. Verse 31, by faith, the hallowed tree have perish not with them that perish not when she had received the spies with peace. As we look at the faith we're talking about tonight, how do you think about this faith? Number one, faith reckons. Faith reckons. You're reckoning. It's like you're calculating. You're saying, in five minutes time, I'm through. I'm going to be healed. 
It's like you're saying, tonight, I'm through with this problem. Tonight, I'm through with all these Jericho walls. They're coming down tonight because faith reckons. Number two, faith receives. Faith receives. You see, when you have faith, you're going to receive. How did they get water out of the rock? By faith. How did the Red Sea part in two? By faith. How did Jericho walls come down flat? By faith. How did Rahab receive the protection, the preservation? By faith. Faith reckons, number one. Faith receives, number two. Number three, faith restrains. Faith restrains. You see, faith restrains your language. Faith restrains your feeling. Faith restrains your thinking. You know, you were thinking before, how will this be? Once faith comes in, faith will restrain the way you think. Because now this is faith. And everything that God said will happen, will happen. So all that you have been thinking, will this be, will that not be? Faith restrains your thinking and your talking. Faith, number four, restricts. Faith restricts. What does that mean? It means it restricts your association with those who are always doubting. Thomas, we've seen the Lord Jesus Christ. He has risen from the dead. And then I will not believe. Mm, they left him alone. <laughs> the Lord will take care of you. Me, I believe. I said, I believe. Faith restricts. It restricts your conversation with people. All those ten spies, they have come back. And they said, yes, the fruit is good. They have said, yes, look at the fruit of them. Then they said, but immediately they put a but on the promise of God. Faith restricts. That's all. I've had all I want to hear. Did you tell me there are good fruits in the land? Yes. Did you tell me that it's a land flowing with milk and honey? Yes. But let's tell you the rest. But, uh -uh. hold your but because there is no but in God. I said there is no but in God. You must restrict your conversation with the people that are always doubting all those ten spies. And then come on to Caleb and say, Caleb, tell me the rest. And Caleb says, we are well able. We're going into the land. Today, I want to tell you, if you have the mind, we're going into the land. We're going into that land in Jesus' name. Amen. And I want to tell you that this man, Caleb, was among these people that went over Jericho. And then later in Joshua, I said, Joshua, do you remember when we went out together? And when I brought the good report. And you know what Moses told me? He said, 40 and 5 years have passed. I'm now 85 years of age. I am as strong as I was at that time. Give me this mountain. You will have it in Jesus' name. Restrict your interaction, restrict your conversation with all those that are always putting but, but, but on the watch of God. Number five, faith rests. Faith rests. Now I can rest assured that it's going to be done. I'm no more running up and down, helter skelter, going to the mountain and going to the valley and seeking for this and seeking for that because now I can rest. You will rest in Jesus' name. Look at Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6. Hebrews 11, we're looking at verse 6. It says, but without faith it's impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God, he that cometh to God, he that cometh to God, to whom have you come tonight? I said, to whom have you come tonight? That's all. That's all. When you stand up to pray, and then as you close your eyes like this, why do we close our eyes? Because we want to shut off all the men, all the women, anybody around. And then we're looking at the invisible God. Because Moses had faith, and he saw him that is invisible. That's why we close our eyes. And I said, Lord, I'm closing my eyes now. I don't see any man. I don't see any problem. I don't see any mountain. I don't see any challenge. I don't see any heartache. I don't see any struggle. All I see as I'm closing my eyes, what do I see? Who do I see? Tell me out loud. God. And I say, I come to you now. That's faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he that comes to God must believe that he is. Must believe that he is. Do I believe God is? I said, do I believe God is? Anybody, your God died yesterday? Last week? Your God died uh, this morning? 
Is he still there? Praise the Lord, my God is there. I said, my God is there. I said, my God is there. And where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in their midst. God is with you there. I said, God is with you there. The healer of the sick is with you there. The deliverer of the oppressed is with you there. The one that rolled all the stones away and all the mountains away is with you right there. He must believe that God is and that God is a rewarder. God is what? A rewarder. God is what? A rewarder. Anytime you come to God, he rewards you. You know, when you reward somebody, you carry something away. You take something away. He doesn't take away from you. He gives you something. He gives you miracle. He gives you salvation. He gives you holiness. He gives you power. He gives you deliverance. Because he is a rewarder of those that... Of those that... Of those that diligently seek him. You've got it already. Where are you? Why don't you stand up and get it? Stand up and get it. Your miracle is right there. All those walls are down today. All those challenges that are solved today. Because he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. You're seeking the Lord. I believe that he is. And that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. What are those Jericho walls? What are those challenges? What are those difficulties? What is that sickness? What is that infirmity? What is that bondage? For you today, God has come to deliver you and to set you free. These Jericho walls will fall. The strongholds must come down. The sickness must leave. This infirmity must be healed. No spirit of fear in you anymore. No doubt in you anymore. No anxiety in you anymore. It's done. It's done. It's done. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the miracle candidate say. And those people that know that the Jericho walls around them, they are falling down today. Let them say. And when you put your total trust in God, full assurance in the trusting heart. If you are there, let the people of God say. Now, those who are ready to celebrate, those who are ready for testimony, those who are ready to see all these Jericho walls come down, those who are ready that every sickness in any part of your body, in your joint, in your tummy, in your head, in your eyes, in your ears, in your blood system, anything that has been there should not be there. Those who are ready that everything is going to be so right now, those who are ready that all these mountains are moving away, those who are ready that all these Jericho walls, they're coming down flat. Those who are ready that the strongholds, that they're being demolished right now, where are you? Raise up your hand. Raise up your hand. You are not going to go back the same as you came. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you because we came here for healing. We have got that healing. We came here for deliverance. We have got that deliverance. We came here for authority, we've got authority. We came here for power, we've got that power. We give, came here for the fire of the Holy Ghost to burn within us. That fire is burning already in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray right now for anybody here that had not fully known the Lord. I pray, Lord, like Rahab came to put her faith in, in the Lord. I pray that right now they put their faith in the Lord in Jesus' name. Anyone here hearing the sound of my voice, Lord, I pray as they put their faith in Christ, they will not perish. Lord, they will not perish. 
all the sins they have committed which have been on their record i pray lord in your mercy and love forgive them in jesus name that assurance of salvation that assurance of sonship that assurance of protection that assurance of pardon that assurance of forgiveness that assurance of redemption give unto them now in jesus name he said, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Oh Lord, I pronounce that salvation for them. Let them get saved in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord, because we know that is done. That is done. That is done. That is done. Lord, now we come to you. You promised us, whosoever, whosoever will call on the name of the Lord will not be ashamed will not be confounded, will not be disappointed. Lord, there is no disappointment in the house here today. There's no disappointment in the congregation here today. Lord, I pray, everyone that has come here, Lord, I pray, everything they ask him from you, grant unto them in Jesus' name. Any swelling on anyone there? Put your hand right there. Now you have any swelling there? I command that swelling. Come out in Jesus' name. That anear, that goiter, that hunchback, that swelling head. I command you right now. Come out in Jesus' name. Lord, those who have mental disturbance, mental insanity, demonic oppression, tormenting their brain, Tormenting their mind, wanting to remove their clothes and run to the streets, not able to sleep at night. All those powers of evil, I break you right now in Jesus' name. Lord, all the torment in their mind, all the torment in their brain, all the torment in their thinking, I cancel it right now. I erase everything right now. Set them free in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for those who have any pain, any part of their body, in the bone, in the joints, in their backbone, in their neck, any kind of pain. I come against all that pain right now, and I pronounce healing upon you in Jesus' name. Lord, I'm asking right now, everything your people desire, everything they came for, I pray that this will be the day and the time of that miracle upon their lives right now in jesus name the fellow there that is hearing voices and the, you hear the voice is disturbing you and you're looking back who is talking to me and there's nobody there is the evil spirit trying to confuse your life all that voice i silence you right now in jesus name lord i pray for that adult that is still urinating uncontrollably you can't control your bladder and the unit just comes out and it's like you feel ashamed about it. I pray, Lord, mend that bladder. And I pray that that uncontrollable urinating will stop right now in Jesus' name. I'm asking for that one that is having the hearing problem. I pray the Lord will touch those ears right now. Deaf ears be opened in Jesus' name. And you know that person that is not able to talk well, you can talk, but it's like it gives you difficulty to even bring out any voice, any, any, any word at all. I pray that the free flow will come to you right now. Be healed in Jesus' name. Yeah, the fellow that went for the x-ray, and the doctor was trying to show, look at this place, look at that place on the x-ray. That's where the problem is. Oh Lord, I pray everything in that x-ray. Correct it right now. Touch them right now. Heal them in Jesus' name. Yeah, the person that has somebody in the hospital, and that fellow is still there, and you're wondering, this fellow in the hospital, I wish I could bring the person. Oh Lord, I pray. The people who are brought here today, either from hospital or they're still over there, send your power to them. Send your healing to them. Send the deliverance to them. Touch them. Heal them in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray every Jericho wall right here now before any brother, any sister, any boy, any girl, Jericho walls come down in Jesus' name. All the strongholds of the enemy, I command, come out in Jesus' name. Every bondage, every yoke, I destroy everything. 
Set your people free. Lord, here, set them free. Over here, set them free. Over there, set them free. On top there, set them free. Outside there, set them free. Freedom, freedom, liberty, deliverance, dominion. Everywhere now, in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord, because I know it's done. Lord, we thank you because we know it's done. In Jesus' name, we pray. And everybody said, I am free. I am free. I am saved. I am healed. I have dominion. Greater is sin. Greater is he. Greater. 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 Greater is he. That is in me. Than he that's in the world.